Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to bring you a review of Goal Zero's newest of power banks, one of the Venture line. This is the new Venture 35 portable power bank. All right, so let's start off by breaking the seal here. So I've just gotten a couple of these. Um, as you can see here on the table already with me is the Goal Zero Venture 75. And I do have, uh, or at least had, the Goal Zero Venture 30 and 70, but I thought it was time for an upgrade. So let's go ahead and take this guy out here. Let's see, let's go ahead and look at a few of the specs while I take this out here. Wow, this one's a tiny guy. Looks like it comes with a USB Type A 10 inch cable approximately. Type A on this side, Type C on this side, so that way it can deliver fast charging through this. Uh, it is going to require a quick charge 3.0 port, I believe. Otherwise, you're going to be running things like 2.4 amps, 5 volt, so about 12 watts of charging power without it. This is much smaller than its bigger brother here. So again, Goal Zero Venture 75 right here, Goal Zero Venture 35. It's a pretty substantial difference uh, when holding it in appearance. I have already been able to use this um, on the go a little bit, slipping this just into my back pocket, um, but I'm going to talk about a few of the conveniences of this one and then maybe contrast that against this. Uh, so let's go ahead and for starters with those specs, the Goal Zero Venture 35 is going to have a 9,600 milliamp hour battery, uh, 36 watt hours of stored power. You're going to be able to charge this via the USB and the top of the device that's underneath this little silicone protective cover. Um, you have access to a type C, which is over here on the side. That's going to be an 18 watt quick charge. And then you have two type A output only, which is going to deliver a five volt, three amp, therefore a 15 watt maximum charge off of this unit right here. Now this is, a waterproof unit all right and a few people contested me about my goal zero venture 35 claiming that they spoke to goal zero directly and goal zero said regardless of this clear silicone being removed or opened the unit is still waterproof uh, so that's what the goal zero customer service representatives have said However, the difference is I don't see that anywhere written in the user's manual, um, nor do I see it anywhere acknowledged even online in writing. So I don't know if I'd be willing to test that. However, uh, that is something of note. All right, so how can you charge this? This can be charged by wall. Uh, so it can take a charge directly from a wall outlet. Of course, you gotta be using a type C charger to do that with. Um, you can charge this using Goal Zero's solar panels. The Nobad series might be some of the best uh, because those will put out up to 10 watts uh, coming out of them through their USB portions. And, um, and then outside of that, you can also, of course, charge by other means, uh, such as a car charger, um, anything that would basically push out through a Type C, which would even include another power bank. All right. So let's get into one of the, the unique details of this that might put this above some of the rest that you might be choosing. One, it's extremely rugged. Uh, so this thing can be dropped. It's encased in rubber and then hard plastic, and it seems to be of a high quality. And then on the sides here, it's made of an aluminum. That ridge is gonna provide additional surface area, allowing this to stay cool uh, or become cooled much quicker as compared to maybe something flat and ordinary. All right, uh, so a lot of power. This is airline safe, uh, so it even has little insignia on here. Um, how do you see its state of charge? You're gonna be able to click the, the battery button right here, click that, and then it'll light up with a few blue lights. All right, so each blue light is gonna represent about 25% charge capacity. Um, while this is charging, it will start blinking when it is giving a charge, it'll light up initially and then it'll just simply disappear. All right, so nothing big there. 
Now the second part of this that's going to make this convenient, maybe compared to some of the others that are out there, is this has a built-in flashlight. All right, and so to activate that flashlight, what you're going to do is on the front of the unit, you're going to press and hold this. And it takes about three seconds, two and a half, three seconds to light up, but you're going to get a 50 lumen flashlight uh, forward facing off of it. Compared to their older models, their older models, the design was it was on the front of the unit and it would also double as the battery indicator. Uh, so I kind of like this a little bit better. You get to hold it a little bit more like a regular flashlight instead of holding something flat out the entire time. Uh, but 50 lumens, seems like they could have put a little bit more power in there, but it's not a significant power draw. So the thing should last you quite a long time in terms of uh, being able to use this as an emer emergency power source. All right. So now here's one of the other benefits of this unit is it does take a fast charge. All right, so this is an 18 watt fast charge. All right, depending on what you're plugging into, especially with a cable like this is gonna give you uh, whatever the, the wattage that um, it can max out at. All right, sometimes it's the cable, sometimes it's the, the output source, and sometimes it's the unit itself. So on this one, I'm gonna do a demonstration. I've already got this powered on and it'll give us an output reading of what it's going to charge at and i'm going to plug this in via its type c adapter here all right and as you can read here it's going down to four watts went all the way down to one and then right now it's maxing out at 10 watts off of this usb type a to type c charger now, what's curious is these are 2.4 amp, 5 volt chargers. So theoretically, they should be charging right around 12 watts, okay? But it's not. It's charging at 10 watts, all right? So now, I'm going to contrast this. I'm going to use a type C cable, so a C to another C cable. I'm going to plug in to the same unit here. All right, and I'm actually not gonna use the, the 18 watt quick charge. I wanna use the 60 watt power delivery port. I'm gonna plug that into the same USB type C. All right, I've just plugged it in. And this is nearly fully charged, but for some reason, this unit is deciding to charge this big unit right here. All right, this is one of the main problems. I don't care for the, the power delivery port is you don't get to choose the direction of the current. All right, it's supposed to do a power balance. So therefore, if this is at 95% and this is at 82%, the charge should be going from here to here. And that's actually what it's doing right now. Okay, so this is 82%. I'm, I'm assuming this is in the realm of closing in 100%, um, but you don't get to choose that direction. And more than likely, I wanna take this with me on the go. I don't wanna to top this off. I wanna to top this off to go with me. So luckily enough, you just gotta find a quick charge port. All right, so I'm gonna do that. And now here we can see I am charging at 12 watts output to the 18 watt capable quick charge port. All right, so it's supposed to be able to charge at 18 watts maximum and then deliver 18 watts output to your portable devices, uh, which could even include a laptop if, if it came down to it as a necessity. And as I stated, as you are charging, that blue light is going to start blinking. Now, when the blue lights no longer blink and they just stay on full, that means that this is at a full charge. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that but I want to do one more test here, and that way you can contrast if this, the smaller unit, is gonna be the better of the two, because this, again, more portable, still water resistant, but then this big brother over here, the Venture 75, I'm gonna plug this in to its Type-C power delivery port, and then notice the speed that this one can charge at. This one can take a charge at 60 watts. All right, and this is a 72 watt hour capacity battery right here. And this thing can take a charge at 60 watts. 
So that means in about an hour and a half, because you know it'll slow down at the, the very end of it uh, for that last 20%, you'll be charging this thing at a very rapid rate. Um, and I can get this charged in, in about an hour and a half, whereas this, I'll probably be able to charge full in about three hours, all right? And if I'm gonna go on a road trip and I need a quick charge, I'm gonna plug this bad boy up and uh, within, let's just say 20 minutes, I'm gonna have the capacity to charge a standard smartphone's 20 watt hour battery and, um, you know, do a quick charge at that on that smartphone as well. So in 20 minutes, I can charge this up to where it completely charges a, uh, a smartphone. Whereas on this, I'd have to wait about an hour to get that same charge level on this. And then of course, I'm gonna have to deliver that back at approximately the same rate uh, because most smartphones nowadays are in the realm of 18 watt charge. Uh, but funny enough, phones are getting smarter and they're gonna be able to take more and more and therefore something like this could charge that much faster. And so this is the Goal Zero Venture 75, taking a charge at about 60 watts, um, extremely capable device, but much larger as you can see. All right, so retail cost is gonna be $69.99 for the Goal Zero Venture 35, which is what this review is more or less about. However, you do get a glimpse at the Goal Zero Venture 75, which is practically the same device, just larger and faster charging. It has the exact same number of ports. It just instead supplies a 60 watt power delivery port instead of an 18 watt quick charge port on this. All right, and then for those of you that would like to know in terms of water resistance, um, it does show this as a waterproof door, and I apologize about my shaky hands, but it's going to claim um, that this would be waterproof with that closed by the packaging. Um, and then outside of that, um, I don't see anything else on here that would indicate that that does not require it to be closed. Um, it is IP67 rated. All right, so up to a meter deep, 30 minutes, fresh water. And just to, to make sure that we're contrasting this right, this is the exact same water resistance on the Gold Zero Venture 75. Um, so if that plays a part into your decision to purchase this, you're just gonna have to choose. Do you like something that's super large or a bit smaller? And um, just as a, a, a last thing, a parting detail, some of the cool things that you might be able to do with some of the Goal Zero products, uh, just to, to showcase this for you. I've got their little wand uh, that you could charge, pardon, not charge, but you could run this light off of. And since this runs at about a watt, you know, that's 32 hours worth of book reading or lighting something out at night with a little gooseneck on there, all right? Um, another product that I really like, and I actually just got two more of, the Light of Life 350. Now, how would you use this with this right here? Uh, well, it doesn't plug in directly because this has a proprietary port on it, but all you gotta get is their adapter, or you can get um, these come included with a vehicle lighter adapter, and you can just get off of Amazon for $3, $4, a USB to female vehicle light or adapter socket. And you can run this because this runs at one and a half and four and a half watts. That's plenty of hours of usage off of something as small as this. And there you go, you've got light uh, for hours at a campsite or wherever. And both of these can be used in inclement weather because they're both water resistant. This can be submerged, this is gonna be rainproof. All right. So I hope this was helpful for everybody. If you like these videos, um, please give me a thumbs up, like, share, um, and subscribe. And I'm gonna have a few more videos about the Yetis that I have, along with, I've just purchased a Goal Zero Yeti 1500X. I'll be doing a review of that, and maybe a breakdown of some of the things that you can utilize with it. Uh, so again, if you like these videos, please be kind, share, like, subscribe, um, and I'll check you until the next video. Peace, aloha.